Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to another StarCraft 2 cast. Heart of the Swarm action today, let me introduce the two players. In the lower left position, we do have the blue Zerg, it is Ragnarok who if I'm not mistaken has very recently joined LGIM. So at least that's what I believe, I checked it on Liquipedia and apparently it is correct as well so fairly sure about that. Here's a, and he's even now saying in there so yep I am right yes that is good times his opponent in the right position it is the red protoss it is area kitty so yay this will be fun times it is a pvz as well I'm excited about this because I'm gonna be honest with you even though these games are not being released all at once mainly due to me doing a game a day or two games a day I have had a bit of a heart of the swarm evening. I kind of sat down and I thought to myself, do you know what, Maddles? You should cast some heart of the swarm tonight. And I was like, yeah, I will. I'll do a couple of games and then maybe I'll play some or something like that. And that was where I was at about two and a half hours ago. And yet, I am still casting. Some may say I'm addicted. Some may say I just love producing some cool content. And that's mainly because I've been really enjoying the games, actually. They've been really fun. So I hope everyone who's watching them is enjoying them as well. And doesn't decide to try and call someone out to make sure I'm still alive after my cast a -thon. But still, let's talk about what's happening in this game. Spawning pool coming down. We have got a pylon on the low ground in a bit of an unusual place. I'm not going to lie. That is a very unusual place to put a pylon. I've seen them here. But I, or even up here, but not really here. This is quite cool. I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. In terms of what Kitty's doing, just probably gonna go for an Exus first right now. It is Force Cross Spawns, of course. The other thing to note is that it is a gold expansion in the middle. Now, down here, we've got just a single probe zapping its way at the hatchery because, of course, hatcheries never hurt anybody. There's no Zerglings out yet. So, this is the little probe that thinks it could. Maybe. Just. Maybe I can kill this hatchery. Go on, little probe. I'm going to zoom right in on you to give you the absolute limelight because ultimately it's early game in StarCraft and not much else is going on. But then, after I gave you all that attention, probe, did you get camera shy? Did you? I really hope this probe doesn't die now. And since it is early game and not much is going on, we are going to follow the adventures. Watch out, Zerglings! Zerglings, run, little probe, run. Run, go on, little probe. You can get out of there. Don't worry, you're down to, like... 15 health, it's fine, you should be good. Okay, we're bored of that probe now, at least I am anyway. I'll try and cap catch back to him as he's moving across the map in case he does die, but now photon cannon in the mineral line. This is probably the best place to put a photon cannon early on, just because it means you can cover all of this, so that's good. The probe is trying to throw... Oh, look at this probe! He is such a dedicated team player! He even tried to distract the Zerglings by sending them out the other way, and then realised, oh, that's not where my home is, I better go back. Anyway... The probe, oh my goodness, the probe, is it going to die? Is it? Is it? Let's have a quick moment of silence for the little probe. The little probe that couldn't. But that is fine. Because, as we can see, the gateway's up, the forge is up, the cannon's up, the cyber core is about to be up, the third hatchery is up. Oh my, oh my, oh my, this is what I like to see, that we're going into a standard game. No cheese. And that just means, oh look at this, I think the Nexus one pixel off. Oh, ooh, ooh, was it a bit too far off? I don't know, we'll wait and see. But regardless of that fact, the wall off is complete. We will just glaze over the fact that it may be not quite in the right position. So, in terms of mid-game strategy, what can we be seeing from the Zerg player? Well, to be honest, it's mo most likely going to be fairly standard. Roach Hydra is really getting a lot of showing if people are going to go for the new Hydralisks. Into Viper can be very potent. Swarm Host Corruptor is a good composition at the moment. And meanwhile, for Kitty, we haven't seen much of a commitment. There's Twilight Counter coming up, which is making me think that it could be DTs. It's something that Kitty likes to do. Not going to be Stargate Tech, so no Oracle Harassment or anything like that. It's also not likely to be into a Robotics Bay too quickly, so no super fast Colossi, which of course are all potent. There's the Dark Shrine, so I was right in thinking that it should be DTs. Are we going to see a Mothership Core is what I'm really waiting for, because that offers a lot of utility. This probe, where's it going to go? Oh, the Overlord! Is he This is really important, the Overlord is going to see it. There we go! So seize the probe, and of course now... 
one can happily assume that maybe a proxy pylon's coming down. The Zergling's already on their way out. This could put an end to this DT play, even though it hasn't yet been scouted. So, good, uh, good planning, good vision, good map awareness in general from the Zerg player at the moment. The drone transfer on its way through, the lair starting up. The concern for me though is that this lair takes quite a long time to hit. The Dark Shrine is only about 40, 35 seconds away. And as such, if a pylon does get up, although I'm not quite sure where, considering just... Seriously, I just want to flick over to Ragnarok's vision for a moment. Look at this. Overlord, ready for any pylons down there. Overlord here for pylons. Overlord coming up here for pylons. And even the watchtower was held previously to keep an eye out for pylons. So very, very good map awareness. And now, the third base out of Kitty is getting scouted by this Overlord. So Overlord placement, we can now all agree, is very good. And even going to spot the Dark Shrine, my goodness! This is solid play by IM's player right now. And as such, I am, like, seriously, colour me impressed. Because even though these DTs are coming in, Spore Crawlers have been started at the natural. And also now at the third base. The main needs to start one fairly soon. But Lair is finished. The Overseer is a Morphin. Where is he morphing in? In the main base. So these DTs are not going to have much fun. This is not going to be a party that they would likely enjoy. And one DT has actually been forgotten about there. The Queen going to start going to town on the DT. Trying to come into the main base is going to get taken out. So this DT harassment is getting shut down fairly hard to be honest. Although, what's this? Why is that DT being left? Go back. Go back. Good. That is the right thing to do. Go back. Kill it off. But actually, I've got to say, this has done a decent amount of damage. 14 workers killed, that's fairly good. That's actually beyond fairly good, that is very good. And it's actually to put Kitty ahead in terms of the worker count. And considering the third base is up and running, that is borderline brilliant, actually. I would say this is now suddenly looking to be quite a close game. <coughs> Concern-wise, though, we do have road speed coming down. So this is perhaps Ragnarok gearing up for a bit of aggression. The infestation pick coming down. Will it be for infestors? Will it be for swarm hosts? Time will tell. But speedlings coming up. Not going to go in there. They're just like, nope. Cannons are not my thing, bro. Now going to go into the natural. But a good number of sentries. Just the risk of the force field, which at this level would not be missed. Just say that actually, no. Let's wait for a couple more reinforcements. Maybe let's just run away and go and find this pylon. And they're not going to find the pylon, unfortunately. This is, I don't know why I've started doing this cast in sort of a storytelling mode. I really don't know what's happened to me. I was just like, I, I seem to want to follow units on their little adventures around the map. It's kind of like story time, as if I'm talking to... I'm, if, if I was describing StarCraft to say, like, my niece or something, who's about four, this is how I would describe it. Like, let's follow the little probe. Is it the little probe that could get across the map? My goodness. What has happened to me? I need to seriously watch an action film or something and be like, boom, explosions. It's all good. Anyway. Coming back to the game at hand, Zerglings are going to just try and come into third again, but realise, yep, the cannons are still there, and I still can't push into those. We do have Enduring Locust coming out, though. That means Swarm Hosts. Now, Swarm Hosts, I want to touch on this a little bit, because this push is going to run away almost certainly. Swarm Hosts basically mean that I am going to be forced to commit very heavily to this tech. And the reason for that is a couple of swarm hosts are about as useful as a couple of milliliters of petrol. They don't really do much and get much done. But if you have a lot of them, well, then suddenly your opponent's army is on fire and there is nothing they can do about it because there's just wave after wave of locusts which just slowly kill you. And as a Protoss player, especially as a Protoss player without Colossi, Actually, as a Protoss player, without even a robotics facility, unless I just can't see it, you're just in major problems. Seriously, that is... This is a big issue right now for Kitty, these swarm hosts. The Overseer is coming over and being like, what, you've not even got a robotic facility? That means no detection. And you know what no detection means? These burrowed swarm hosts are invulnerable. They cannot be killed. There is nothing Ragnarok can do. Seize the Locusts now, and of course, anything you kill with Locusts, are free units, and free units are better than a free lunch. They just mean that you're going to probably end up winning this game. The Locusts just chipping forward, and the next wave coming through. Cool little micro trick for Swarm Hosts. As soon as they have spawned Locusts, unburrow, move forward, reburrow. Swarm Locusts, unburrow, move forward, reburrow. That is how you micro Swarm Hosts, because the Locusts actually give you cover between the waves and between the creeping forward. But for the moment, 
Ragnarok just happy to hold the big ground and just be like, guess what? You can't push into this, the robotics facility coming down. This is just to get the Observer firstly to deal with the Swarm Hosts, and then to obviously get out Colossi in order to start trying to deal the splash damage to the Locust, but already Ragnarok has got up 16 Swarm Hosts, oh my goodness, that is, is a bad position to be in the DT, what are you doing DT, Fungal Growth, Fungal Growth, go on, oh you've got Overseers, never mind, don't need Fungal Growth, that's fine, move forward, Burrow the Swarm Hosts, go on, go on, waddle 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 waddle, Burrow, this is seriously bad times, the rally point is set forward. Oh, the army. Oh, the locusts. Oh, the locusts are going to tank up so much of this. Zergling's even coming in as well. There is a time warp going down, but of course, as we can see, why risk units that cost you money when you can just use units that are free? The answer is there is no reason you should do that. You should just slowly pick apart the Protoss force, wait for the locusts to start killing everything. A good fungal growth goes down. Guess what, Blink? You are not going to be doing anything for the time being. The mothership core does fall. The Corruptor's coming out. Of course, Swarm Host Corruptor, such a good composition. The only thing really that's good against it are indeed Tempest and Void Rays. But as we can see now, the Locust coming forward. Good use of Time Warp before that mothership core went down. Just trying to slow him down, but the Stalker count slowly going down. And just look at how cost effective this is. Already at double the resources lost compared to the Zerg player. Kitty is in a major problem right now. Yet more Locusts are streaming forward. The Swarm Host could arguably move forward, and just as I say that, they do. Just moving forward a little wave. Reburrow, spawn the next wave. Move forward, burrow, and that is what you do. Um, now we're just seeing these Stalkers are just... Oh, it's so painful to watch the Observer... The Overseers... Uh, the Observers, rather, coming forward. But the Corruptors, if they do snipe them off with the Overseers, then that is the most important thing. One goes down, two goes down, and now suddenly the Swarm Hosts are yet again safe, and the Stalkers blink right underneath. So many Stalkers went down there. That is just crazy. 11,000 resources lost compared to 3,600. Swarm hosts are good unit, guys. Seriously, that, wow. This is tough times, especially when the gold base in the center is up to the Zerg as well. And to be honest, Kitty is going to have to do something fairly incredible. Ragnarok also just playing this for fun now, getting up Broodlord. So he's going to have ground and air free unit, which is just good times. A good fun growth goes down. And actually, this is a smart choice. This is a very clever decision out of Kitty that actually, I can't engage this force. So what if I just ignore it? What if I just come and kill you? What are you going to do about it then? Well, the answer is not too much. The, the roaches are going to try and come back, are going to try and deal with this. But obviously, a good bit of damage done, bought some time, perhaps. The swarm hosts are also completely exposed. So if only there was detection there, they could have got cleaned out, but unfortunately there was no observer. But here they come now with the DTs there. Oh my goodness, the swarm hosts are dying. Quick, unburrow the swarm hosts. Run them away as fast as you can. Where are the roaches? Well, they're all back here. So are the overseers trying to deal with all of that. And Kitty has managed to push back this inevitable swarm line. But this is fine because Kitty, you've got problems. The corruptors are out. The overseers are out. And that means that your great plan of sneaking the DTs up may not work now. The Locust just, oh, so aggressive. The Broodlord's morphing. A Broodlord still so cost effective. This is just scary to watch. And seriously, if you're a Protoss player and you come against this, you really have got to hope you've got a Stargate and you've got a good Tempest count because you need the range and you need the, o the Observers in order to snipe off these Swarm Hosts from a, from a distance. So, what we're seeing now is obviously these 1-1 one, one locusts just going to slowly start creeping forward. The broodlords there, they can start shelling up into the main base as well. Broodlings, melee, locusts, ranged. That is very, very scary in terms of a free unit composition. The, the stalkers can't blink underneath because the second they get underneath those broodlords, you're in trouble. So Kitty forced the GG out, but Ragnarok playing such a solid, logical, steady game. It was beautiful to see. Remember everyone, if you did enjoy, like the video, leave a cool comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see each and every one of you back tomorrow for yet another new cast. Bye for now.